Hey, Bill here with 30 Minute Wood Shop. Thanks for joining me. Just got the shop finally cleaned up. I helped my son put together a gaming table. Matter of fact, take a quick look at this video. So there's a top in place. Yep. Got it one handed. Yeah. So pretty slick. Yeah. We'll get it out of the out of the chocks and out of the ground and ready to rock. Love that shine. Yeah, it turned out really good. It's gonna be great for Dungeons and Dragons. It's gonna be per it's gonna be perfect for probably almost anything and everything. Turned out really good, especially considering we're using construction grade lumber, and you know how that stuff is these days. It's twisted and warped. It's horrible. Anyway, today what I'm gonna show you how to do is create a bottle opener using the remains of that barrel stave from the last project. Oh, by the way, I did cut off eight, eight and a half inches I reserved for another project. I'm going to be making a whiskey smoker. So let's take this over to the saw and start cutting. Anytime you're working with barrel staves or those kind of parts and they rock, make sure they're appropriately stabilized. Don't try any cuts unless the part is stabilized. You can see I've got a small piece here, propping that up. It's glued down, so we should be good. Let's start cutting. So you've cut your part. First thing you'll notice if you look at the end view, is it's probably not, one, it's not square. And two, it's more of, a, of an odd trapezoid where the outside is wider than the inside and the angles are not exact, exactly the same. Not a problem, it won't make any difference. What we have to do now is we have to find, kind of find the center because we need to drill a hole that's going to fit the bottle over. So, pretty, pretty easy. You're going to have to do some eyeballing here. So, normally on a square, all you do is you go corner to corner and then corner to corner. And that sets up your square. In a trapezoid, however, that moves the center toward the small side. So I have to eyeball between these two sides and move it to about there. There we go. So easy enough. Now all I have to do is take it all, point that so I, my drill will find a spot, and then drill to the appropriate size. All right. So I marked the hole for the birdcage off. Great little tool. All it is is a, is a point with four sides. Whatever you push down on it and twist, it basically reams out the hole. So it gives you a great starting point. I mic'd the uh, kit bottle opener uh, to 5 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, so that'll be just enough to get this in. Get it, actually, 5 sixteenths will screw it in. It's a little bit larger than that. It's uh, 338. So that'll give me enough room to screw it in. I'm also going to epoxy this in, so all the screwing in is going to do is hold it in until the epoxy dries. So I also took the uh, piece, measured the distance on this 5 16 drill, and then taped it off a quarter inch more, just to give me a little extra room for some, uh, some epoxy to push down there so it doesn't try and, and do a hydrolock seal and push it back out. And now all I have to do is drill a hole. So with the hole in, you have a couple of choices. You can just sand the corners to soften them up, or you can use a plane to bring those down to a nice curve, or you can route them. I think I'm going to route mine. Yeah, I think I put a quarter inch, a quarter inch round over. Maybe a three eighths. I'll see what's in my toolbox. So I took a really close look at my router. And my routing options, there was no good way for me to hold this safely, so I'm going to actually use a plane. This is a number three uh, Stanley, and I'm going to use that to round the edges. So, looking good. So, one thing you want to do is take off enough so it feels good in your hand. One thing you'll notice is because this is a a uh, convex, concave curve right here. This is convex, this is concave. That I take more off on the ends, so there's a little more white 
uh, oak exposed here. Not a problem, it's still going to look really good when we get done. At this point, I need to do a little more work. I want to bring this down a little bit more around the edges, and it should be pretty good. I'm also going to have to decide on the size. This is seven inches. Normally, they're about five and a half or six. This is pretty beefy. I'm thinking I want to cut it off to about five and a half. So five and a half puts it, five puts it right, at the, right here. Five and a half gives me a half inch of clearance. So a beefier hand could hang on to it. So let me do some more cleaning, get this into a shape that I like better. So this is the great thing about having, having using a hand tool is you can work with it until you like it. So now what I have to do is sand, off, sand this off. As I said, 80 grit should do just fine. All right, on the face here, I'm going to hit it with 80 grit, but not really hard. I just want to take the dirt off of it and leave the patina. Especially this one, because I, I have some really nice red marks from that uh, barrel, along with some black tannin and rust marks. There we go. That'll be perfect. Okay, I went to 320 on this. Feels really good. Now we're gonna do a test fit. Just to see how this feels and looks. And that uh for this, that 516's worked really well. With a little epoxy on it, it's never coming out. Orientation's right. Looks pretty good. So I definitely, definitely think we need to cut this thing off. And I'm going to cut off about... Cut off about two and two and a half inches off this thing. Yeah, cut off about two and a half inches. So we'll take this over to the uh, saw, cut it off, come back. We should be ready to put some finish on this puppy and then uh, epoxy the piece in place and the project will be done. So all you have to do now after sanding is put on some stain. What I'm using here is some Minwix dark walnut. Dark walnut for me gives, gives me the uh, look I want, which is a more of an antique aged oak look. And I'm just using this to, as a uh, little holder. Keep most of it off my fingers. I could use gloves, but I don't. Um, slap it on. Wipe it off. Give it a bit to cure, and we'll move on to some uh, quick poly. You can already see how that's looking. It's really nice. So we'll wait a few minutes and come back and put some poly on it. Okay, nice and dry. Looking great. I put a satin finish on this, by the way, which is one of my preferred finishes for handles. Um, I have JB Weld here, five minute epoxy. Gonna mix it up here on the uh, couple of business cards that are laying around. By the way, business cards and playing cards are great for mixing epoxy on. Small amounts of epoxy. And this doesn't take much at all.
bit on threads. Now because this actually is threaded in, it's one of the reasons I'm not worried about putting very much epoxy on here. If your hole is loose, obviously you're going to have to do some filling with some epoxy. So please keep that in mind. That should just about do it. This has been screwed in like three or four times, so it goes in a lot easier this last time. Now, orientation is pretty, pretty critical to this. For me, because if it's off, I'll think it's weird. And there we have it. So, super quick. Simple, easy project. Make sure if you get any squeeze out here, you wipe it off uh, early, like as soon as you do it. Uh, I didn't, because I didn't put much on here. Just enough to hold this thing in permanently. Uh, the only way you're getting out now is if you're gonna take this thing and uh, chisel it out. So, completed project, super easy to do, very quick. These are great gifts for friends and family. These look great on your bar. I suggest you make one. There'll be links in the bottom for some of the materials I used. Um, if you're Looking for barrel stave material, uh, Skull Creek Designs in uh, Midland, Michigan. There's a link down there for them. I would definitely go to those guys and, and uh, use them. I have, matter of fact. So, on that note, folks, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And hey, until next time, good making.